Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this memorial of All Souls Day, the commemoration of the faithful departed, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, glory of the faithful and life of the just, by the death and resurrection of whose Son we have been redeemed, look mercifully on your departed servants, that just as they professed the mystery of our resurrection, so they may merit to receive the joys of eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through rubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd. There, is there is nothing, nothing I, I shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord, the Lord is, my, is shepherd. my shepherd, there is there nothing, nothing I, I shall want. want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my, is my shepherd. shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I, I shall want. want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, is there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. 
we know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. When we hear our Lord Jesus speak of the will of his heavenly Father, of course it means what our heavenly Father has asked of the second person of the Trinity, the Son, but it also means what the heavenly Father has asked of us. The heavenly Father sins Jesus, and Jesus at his ascension sins us. The Heavenly Father asks Jesus to lay down his life for the salvation of souls, and Jesus asks us to pick up our cross as well. So when we hear our Lord speak of, my Father wills this for me, what we also hear is, my Father wills this for us. We are to seek the salvation and the eternal reward of all souls. And that includes the souls who have gone before us. And this is the great temptation and the great trick of the adversary. That if I can't get the faithful to sin, I'll get them to be apathetic. And in that way, they aren't a help. They aren't an aid. They aren't doing the Father's will. And those he sent them to go love, they refuse to love either out of indifference or because they have willfully believed there is nothing yet to do. He does this for us with confession, where we think, ah, I haven't sinned, I don't need to go. He does this for us with regards to our faith, where we're like, ah, I think I'm pretty good, where we could always grow in love. And he especially does this with those who have gone before us. How many of us think to ourselves, they're gone, and then console ourselves with, but in a better place, and then don't pray. How many of us go to a funeral and see the funeral mass as an opportunity for our consolation rather than the fact that we're offering, or supposed to be, offering prayers united to the sacrifice of Christ for the soul of the one that's just passed. We're there to be sent for their sake, 
And when we in apathy, when we in indifference, when we in a false understanding of "Ah, everything's fine, do nothing, we leave them to their own end. There are two consequences to sin, generally speaking. The first is that the Las Vegas Raiders are a thing. Coupled with that is the eternal punishment of sin. My sin has broken my relationship with God. This eternal punishment is washed away by Christ's one true perfect sacrifice. So at the beginning, impossible for us to make any reconciliation with this. And then Jesus on the cross is like, I paid it, we're good. And now the only way that we suffer eternal consequence or eternal punishment of sin is by our choice, where he has reconciled us to the Father, and yet then we still choose to remain separated, broken thereof. Grave sin, mortal sin, habitual sins, unrepented, etc., etc. The second consequence, generally speaking, of sin is temporal punishment, where there is a consequence for the sins I have committed in this time, in the here and now. And justice demands that that be made recompense before true reconciliation with our Lord. Analogously speaking, it is equivalent to, I throw a rock through my neighbor's window, breaking it. The eternal punishment is I have broken my relationship with my neighbor. The temporal punishment is I broke the window. And my neighbor, out of the goodness of his heart, can love me and forgive me and say, hey, we're good, and we are now reconciled. But his window is still broken, and I broke it. So out of justice, I have to fix what I have broken. This is us with sin. And we can die in a state of friendship with our Lord and by only by God's grace and our participation thereof, heaven here we come. But if that temporal punishment is left unpaid in justice or we're still attached to sin, in justice that must be cleansed and purged from us. Hence purgatory. And purgatory is, yes, a mercy, the safety net to help us who have yet to have those unpaid, who are still attached to sin, has still be able to go there to our Lord. But it is also a purifying state. It is the fires of hell with the hope of heaven. It is a state of suffering. Suffering in which our sins are being purged from us like steel in a fire, And suffering in that, there's the one I love, and I cannot get to be with him. I'm still here in that fire being purged. The equivalency of a husband who is in jail, who cannot be with his wife or his daughter. Beautifully, we here on earth are given by God the opportunity through our prayers and our sacrifices and our actions to expedite their removal from that suffering, to help them clean up the glass and repair the window. And that is our great call and our great privilege, that for love of those who have gone before us, I pray for you, I sacrifice for you, I make offerings for you, that you can go home. And if heaven is relationship perfected, then our relationship would demand Love in action. And if we choose apathy, I'm sure they're fine. We then reject love and relation in action. Every funeral mass is a call to arms to pray and sacrifice for the one who has passed. A call for us to put that love into lived act that our will may be the Father's will, none who have died may be lost. And the devil's temptation, if he can't get us to choose sin, is to choose indifference and do nothing for those we are sent to love. Our invitation on this commemoration of All Souls Day is to do what the saints do for us, We are dependent on the love and prayers of those who sit amongst heaven. God sends them to us to help us get to him. Those in purgatory are dependent on us.
our prayers and our love and our intercession. May we not choose indifference, but choose love and choose to pray and sacrifice for those whom we love, that they may go home. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. My brothers and sisters, trusting in the love and mercy of our Lord, let us unite our hearts and minds and bring forth to God these petitions. For Francis our Pope, for James our Bishop, for all the clergy and consecrated religious, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who govern us, that they may lead us and the world in ways of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and the bereaved, and especially those who are going through times of trial in this moment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, and for all our parish community, that we may grow in faith, hope, and charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray especially for Maria Luisa Prus, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the profound gift of your mercy and love. Please help us by your grace and the intercession of your saints to return the gift of love to our neighbor and to you in all that we are and all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, food of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, food of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Almighty and merciful God, by means of these sacrificial offerings, wash away, we pray, in the blood of Christ, the sins of your departed servants, for you purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness those you once cleansed in the waters of baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs 
in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God God of hosts, hosts, heaven heaven and and earth earth are are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us us this this day our daily daily bread, bread, And forgive us us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. us. And lead us us not not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servants, that cleansed by the paschal mysteries, they may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all the dead, a place of light and peace. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>